So I was looking at the reading set for this week and I thought it might be helpful uh, to post a video. I feel that there are themes within this reading, which comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, things within that reading that relate directly to whether we have the capacity to recognise the work of God when it's right in front of our eyes and whether we have the capacity to welcome people who seemingly operate in a way that's different from the norm um, and maybe even operate a way that suggests that they're oblivious to our processes and the way in which we operate. Um, the reading comes from Matthew chapter 18. I've got my Bible here. Uh, I'm going to split this into two because, in effect, the first part is uh, the authority of Jesus being questioned, and that's from verse 23 on to verse 27. And then there's a parable, the parable of the two sons. What I'm looking at here is the authority of Jesus being questioned. And the key question, I think, for us in the church is do we have the capacity to recognise who Jesus is and welcome him? I know it sounds a bit ironic, but would we be able to welcome Jesus in the life of the church? You know, there's a sense in which I think the church expects people to conform, to fit. I wonder what Jesus would make of that today. But let's just look at the scripture and see what's being said. Just to... Um, to give some context, Jesus is in the temple court, so it's a public space, uh, and he is teaching. The people are clearly in attentive, and during this te time of teaching, he is approached by the chief priests and the elders. And they say to him, um, by whose authority are you doing this? Who gave you the authority to do this? Or, as I would translate it, what the heck do you think you're doing? Um, and Jesus responds by answering a question with a question. Uh, he's fully aware of the dynamic that's going on. I, I can't say what's in Jesus' mind, um, but it seems to me that you could look at this in a generous way and say that the teachers um, were looking to ensure that uh, the teaching of the synagogue was uh, maintained and safeguarded and you could view it positively in the sense that the temple authorities are wary about the Jesus movement and where it might be headed and they want to head off an uprising um, as people look to overthrow the Romans and assert their, their human rights. Um, but on the other hand, you could just view it actually as that these teachers are knocked off, that Jesus' ministry is growing, they are undermined, they feel insecure, and so therefore they ask that penetrating question, you know, what the heck do you think you're doing? You know, who are you? So Jesus responds a question, that question with a question, and he says, well, I'll answer you that if you answer me this question. By what authority did John the Baptist minister? Now, it's at this point that, as I would put it, the, uh, the teachers of the law are stuffed. Because if they say that John the Baptist, uh, his authority came from heaven, then Jesus will, will say, well, why haven't you recognised him then? Uh, it's important to see, know that um, the Jewish clearly these Jewish leaders did not recognize uh, that John the Baptist you know was a prophet sent from God so they, they can't say he is from God they can't change their minds but they also they can't say well John had no authority at all he was working off his own back and uh, he was uh, human uh, human authority uh, because the people loved John the Baptist and they recognise that he was from God so they're stuck so they don't answer and so Jesus says well in which case I'm not going to answer your question of by what authority I do these things but I would say not to be naive about that response in effect Jesus is saying you know exactly whose authority I have 
The question is why you're not recognising that. And I think that there's a real parallel here. Um, what we're seeing is a clash of Jesus's charismatic ministry. That is the sense that people recognize that he's gifted. He has a magnetic personality and they recognize that he's come from God and that in following him, their lives can be transformed. That ministry is clashing with what you might call the traditional or the rational legal authority of the other religious leaders. And somehow they have lost the capacity to recognize that irrespective of the fact that Jesus may appear very different, irrespective of the fact that he may um, have a different origin and he may not be properly authorized, irrespective of all of that, they've lost the capacity to recognize that God's work is being done through him. And more than that, there doesn't seem to be this capacity to change the system in order to recognize and affirm Jesus's ministry. Uh, and I think that that is the ground that we're in today when we think about fresh expressions leaders and those within the church who are looking to encourage the church to, uh, to minister in, in different ways that uh, reach people who the church has struggled to reach in the past. Those who are perhaps are calling changes for changes to the way in which we uh, we operate, our practice, our discipline. And there are those, dare I say it, within the church who kind of sit waiting for this Fresh Expressions kind of business to all be over. The strange thing about Fresh Expressions, though, is that it's got it's it's had quite some time and it's still very much with us. So the key question for us is, do we have the capacity to welcome Jesus? And do we have the capacity to welcome people who are different from us? Because our very future as a church depends on it. Thanks a lot and God bless.